In 625 light years distance, diamonds are raining from the sky on a planet that physics says cannot exist. Three days ago, NASA confirmed it. Welcome back. The James Webb Space Telescope has photographed thousands of exoplanets since its launch. Most follow predictable patterns. Gas giants like Jupiter, rocky worlds like Earth, super Earth somewhere in between. We understand how they form, where they orbit, what they're made of. But on December 27th, the team analyzing Webb's data stopped. Something was fundamentally wrong with planet PSR J232-650b. Not measurement error wrong. Physics defyingly wrong. Let me paint the picture. This planet, roughly Jupiter's mass, orbits a pulsar. Not a normal star. A pulsar. Imagine taking our sun 1.4 million kilometers across and crushing it down to the size of Manhattan. 20 kilometers wide. That's a neutron star. It spins 600 times per second, shooting radiation beams across space like a cosmic lighthouse. The mass of our sun compressed into a city. The gravity is so extreme that a teaspoon of its material would weigh 10 million tons on Earth. Now picture a planet trying to survive in that environment. The gravitational forces are literally stretching this world into the shape of a lemon. Not slightly oval, deformed, one side perpetually pulled toward the pulsar, the other stretched away, and it completes its orbit in eight hours. Eight hours. Earth takes 365 days. This planet finishes its year before you finish your work day. But here's where it gets truly bizarre. When Webb analyzed the atmosphere, the spectrum showed something no one expected, helium and carbon. Not hydrogen and helium like Jupiter, not nitrogen and oxygen like Earth, just helium and carbon with traces of methane, acetylene, benzene. The entire atmosphere is dominated by carbon compounds. Clouds of soot drift through the sky and deep in the planet's core under immense pressure, scientists believe carbon is condensing into crystalline form. Diamonds possibly massive ones. Peter Gao from the Carnegie Earth and Planets Laboratory was on the discovery team. His reaction after seeing the data, this was an absolute surprise. Our collective reaction was, what the heck is this? It's extremely different from what we expected. That's a scientist with 20 years of experience admitting they have no framework to explain this. Now let's talk about the real mystery. Pulsars form when massive stars explode as supernovae. The explosion is so violent it should vaporize anything nearby. Planets, moons, asteroids, everything within light years, gone. Yet somehow, this planet exists. Three theories have emerged, and none are satisfying. Theory one, the planet formed normally before the supernova and somehow survived the explosion, but that seems impossible. The carbon-rich atmosphere suggests the blast stripped away the original hydrogen and helium, leaving only heavy elements. We might be looking at a planet's exposed core, not a whole planet. Theory two, the planet formed after the supernova from debris. Material from the exploded star coalesced into this new world. But how does a planet form in such extreme radiation? Nothing should be able to accumulate and grow there. Theory three, the one that keeps scientists awake. The planet was captured. It formed around a normal star somewhere else and was gravitationally snatched by the pulsar as it passed through space. But the odds of that precise alignment make winning the lottery look probable. Michael Zhang from the University of Chicago, the principal investigator, put it bluntly, the planet orbits a star that's completely bizarre, the mass of the sun but the size of a city. We've studied exoplanets for 30 years. We've found hot Jupiters scorchingly close to their stars. We've found rogue planets drifting through empty space. We've found planets orbiting binary stars, but nothing like this. Here's what makes this discovery profound. This planet survived something that should have destroyed it. Whether it endured a supernova, formed in the aftermath, or was captured, it defied annihilation. Clouds of benzene and acetylene drift through a helium sky, diamonds form in its depths, radiation levels would sterilize any known life in seconds, yet it endures. What does this mean for planetary systems? If planets can survive supernovae, how many pulsar planets exist undiscovered? If they can form in such extreme environments, what does that say about the resilience of planetary formation itself? And here's the question I want you to consider. If life as we know it cannot exist there, could something else, something adapted to radiation, extreme gravity, an atmosphere of pure carbon? Write in the comments what you think. Did this planet form before or after the supernova? Do you believe we'll find more of these impossible worlds? Webb continues scanning the cosmos, and one thing has become clear, the universe is stranger than our theories predicted. PSR J2322 2650b proves we still have fundamental gaps in our understanding. Perhaps that's exactly what makes this so important. It doesn't just show us something new. It shows us how much we still don't know. Thank you for watching. And remember, when NASA says something is impossible, they usually mean we just haven't figured it out yet.
Until next time.